Hi, Chris here. Thanks for stopping by my channel, All Time Jack. Today I'm going to install a digital readout on this old Craftsman Atlas lathe. It's a 101.28990, which means it's a 12 inch swing on a 54 inch bed. I've really been trying to find this particular make and model, and I've come across a few locally or somewhat close, but they're always missing the part that I want, or they're in bad shape, or they are never even reply to the ad. I finally came across this one about four hours away down in the Piney Woods, kind of close to Houston. It's missing a few things as well, but it did have the milling attachment, which we'll use in this video. Steady rest, follow rest, draw bar, quick change tool post, and a lot more, plus a boatload of tooling. Now let's open her up and see what all she came with. This is the 2 Auto 2 Axis DRO. I got it off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. It's not a real expensive magnetic one, like it's on my bridge port. But I've seen them on some machines. We'll see how it works out. Not going to be doing any super precision stuff here, I don't think. Although this would probably be sufficient. We'll find out shortly. Here we have the slide covers. That long one we'll use. That shorter one we'll end up having to make another one. Got us a manual. And that right there is everything that came with it. First thing I'm going to do is just mount this thing on the wall. I modified that bracket just a little bit to make it a little sturdier. Going to drill and tap some holes. I got it clamped up there very lightly. And that worked out pretty good. You really want to tap these holes very straight when you put them in there. And I know that one looks funny, but it's just a camera angle or something. You have a little wiggle room up and down because of the slots in the rails, but you don't have any side to side. It really needs to be spot on. So you really want to make sure you get them centered up or you might have some problems. These things may look kind of intimidating to install, but I mean, if you're doing work on a lathe, you shouldn't have any problem doing this. You do want to pay a lot of attention, however, to what you're doing because you do got to drill some holes into your equipment. So I'm just going to snug that up just a little bit. And then I got a stack of metal here that was just laying around. I think that's three quarter inch, little quarter inch plates. And I'll just use them as a spacer. Snug them up a little bit and make sure that reader head clears everything and then we'll move on to alignment and if you watch that needle it's gonna move so we're gonna put a shim in it and this is on the side I'm gonna put a one and a half thousand shim and that sucker ended up being exactly right because it doesn't move at all for the entire length of the bed now we'll get it on top and you'll see that top moves a little bit too remember we have slots in the rail so I can kind of tap it with my dead blow because I don't have it all the way tight and then I ended up getting that one within a thousandth to all the way across so now I'm just gonna cut a couple of holes and reliefs in these brackets because where they go on the machine they end up covering up some of the Gibbs adjusters and stuff and you'll notice this is a metal one I'm gonna drill a couple of holes in it, and then we're gonna have to put a big hole in the middle of it too, because it, it also goes over a gib adjuster. And you'll understand shortly why I'm using the metal one with the aluminum ones that came with the DRO. So got us a hole in there, and these are adjustable, and I've already measured and got them to the right length. We'll just put them together and get them tight here. And then we're about ready to put it on. And here's the screws we'll use. They just screw right into the bottom, into the reader head. I don't know what it takes to damage that head or break it, but I would use caution here. Be a little careful. And what you see me doing here is sliding some rear earth magnets in between the bracket and the carriage. Which is why we needed this part of the bracket to be metal. And now we'll tighten them up. Initially, I was just doing this to see how it worked before I drilled any more holes into my lathe. But it holds together so well, I'm just leaving it. Bring the carriage over, make sure it's going to clear everything, and then we'll keep testing it out a bunch before we put any covers on or anything. This holds together so good that I've changed the way I'm going to do the other one. 
I'm basically going to do the same thing and just hold everything together with magnets. But I've got to make a bracket to fasten the rail to. And I'm just going to drill and tap a couple of holes here. And these will be the only fasteners in this one. There won't be any holes drilled in my lathe. It'll all be held on with the rare earth magnets. And I'm not necessarily sold on this at this point. Because the whole point of this is for repeatability. But worst case, I'm going to have to drill some holes and put some hardware in it. We'll see what happens. And now I just need to tighten the rail up to the metal plate. Put a few magnets in place. And this is more than enough magnets. I know I said I'm not a believer yet, but these magnets are awfully strong. And if it doesn't work, it's not going to be because the magnets are moving around. So I got it dropped on there, and right off the bat, it's dead on across the top. Sweet. But we go over to the side now, and we got a little work to do here. And then we hit it the wrong way with a hammer. That doesn't help. There we go. And it took a little doing, but finally got that one. And what was tricky about that one is where that reader head sits in there. You just got to find the sweet spot on where it wants to sit. And by the way, I can still adjust those gibs with this on there with my little 90 degree screwdriver. So there's a couple of different ways you could mount this one. I don't want to move my lathe out from the wall anymore. I don't want to move my lathe at all because I spent a lot of time getting it leveled and dialed in. So I like it to put it on the side right here. And there's the good and the bad and the ugly with every way you can do it. And this way, the bad thing about it is that you lose a little tailstock travel. About an inch and a half to two inches. But you can still get to pretty much anything you need to do. And if for some reason I needed that inch and a half or two inches, I can rip this right off and set it back down and readjust it. It only took me five minutes to begin with. So now I'm going to do some repeatability testing. Zero it out and make sure it goes back to the same zero on the X and Y axis. Right there, I just put the lead screw in gear. And then you can't see it because it's down too low, but I engaged the lead screw and I'm just going to run it into that little mark I have on there because that's how long the part we're going to make is. Well so far so good. Now let's zero it out. X and Y axis. And then I'll move it back and move it all around and I got to give it two thumbs up because it is dead on. And I've done this 10 or 12 times. It's dead on both ways. Now I'm real happy. I've played around with it now for a few minutes pretty aggressively. I think it's going to be okay, so let's put some covers on it. Going to drill some holes. And I started to put some screws in it, but I decided to take them out because I broke that one. So I went ahead and drilled and tapped some holes and put some bolts in. And now i got some aluminum sheet here that makes good sound effects. Kind of like the flubber car in the old movie. I'm just going to make a one bend 90 degree cover. And I'm being real careful here, but it's bending real easy. I wasn't sure if it'd work or not. I don't have room for a big break in here, so I just ran down to Harbor Freight because it's pretty close and got this $35 special, and it worked just fine. So that's just a piece of sheet metal. I got a little radius in it. The magnets will hold it on since it's metal. And I'll lay it over that way, and then the aluminum will go over the other way. And then I'm just going to velcro the aluminum one on and you'll see in a little bit it ends up working out pretty good so let's put the compound and the quick change tool post on make sure everything's good there and then let's make something this is my old 1939 walker turner wood lathe and that's the original tool post came with it sometimes i like to use this one but you can see the problem there so I'm going to make a split bushing for it. Take a couple of measurements here. Doesn't have to be super precise. But it'll also let us use the milling attachment. I've never used the milling attachment on this lathe before, so this would be pretty cool. Actually, never used anything on this lathe before because I just got it. So the first thing is I'll drop a tool holder in there with a carbide insert in it. Line it up. And get it ready to face the end of it off. And I'll... Put the lead screw in gear, and then I kind of sped it up so you don't really see me engage it again. But you will kind of see it here in a minute when we engage the other one going the other way. 
So right there, we switch directions on the lead screw. Then right there, we'll re-engage it. And so now we'll take material off going this way. The covers we made right here are working perfect, by the way. Here's a little bit different view. Using the DRO for all our measurements. And it's working out really well. Like I said, it's spot on. All the repeatability seems to be holding up. So I'm real happy with this. Now I think that might have been our last pass. Grab the tool rest holder off of the other lathe. Slide it on there and see how it fit. It is perfect. I am loving this DRO setup. Let's chamfer it, because we chamfer everything. Now I'm going to drill a little pilot hole in here so my drill bit don't dance around too much. Because we got to go all the way through this and we don't want it to wander off or dance around any. Please like and subscribe if you like this sort of thing or if you're into this kind of stuff. I have a bunch of other videos on my All Time Jack channel as well. Go and check it out. Now we'll get a bit installed. That's a pretty decent bit. You got a good curl coming out of both sides. I forgot to set my stop up, so I'll just have to measure that, put a piece of tape on it. Got just a little bit more to go there. I'll run it in and just got a couple more millimeters right there. There we go. Now I've got a little tiny bore bar on there so we can open it up to just the right size. And then we'll part it off. And there we are. Now I need to split it, so I'll put my milling attachment on. I won't be able to mill it all the way through because of the clamp pressure, but I'll mill it down real close, leave a thin wall, and then we'll pull it out and I'll just knock it out with a grinder or a bandsaw or something. This milling attachment's pretty neat. Looks like it works pretty good on some light stuff from what I've seen. It's not very hard to set up. It's pretty easy to use. I don't have a collet set yet for this, so I'm just going to load a end mill up in the three jaw and mill it out. Get the height set. So I have it running on the crossfeed right there, but when we get up towards the edge, I want to see if I can just go through that lip in one pass, so I'm going to do it manually, and then I'll go back and do a cleanup pass manually. So we're just about done. Let's throw it all on and see how it works. Perfect. Nice. Tighten her up. And it's absolutely perfect. Now I'll be able to use my new style tool rest with some of the carbide tools that I've made. And I have a couple of different sizes of these tool rests too. So that'll be nice to have a variety. And to do it with a working DRO on my old Craftsman Atlas lathe was really cool. Please like and subscribe if you're into this sort of thing. See you next time.